Hey everybody, I'm Ted from Tabex. Today's video is going to be slightly different than normal. I recently had a talk with Pedro, who is the head of game servers at Tabex, who is preparing a post around subscriptions. It ended up being a really interesting talk, not just about what a subscription is and why it's important, even things like seller expectations, how you can keep adding value to a subscription, and even things like mental burnouts, etc. After having the talk, we decided to cut it up and present it in this way, almost like a podcast. Down in the description, I will link to the post that Pedro has created if you want to read up more about subscriptions. If you like this kind of content, let us know as well in the description if you find it helpful. We might do something like this again and then actually plan for it beforehand. Without any further ado, let's dive into the recording. There is a big confusion amongst creators in the space who think a one-time package and a subscription package are the same thing where a one-time package merely has a running time of, for example, 15 days, 30 days, 90 days, etc., a subscription package will also carry that same billing cycle, but they will also be automatically renewing. So for example, a one-time 30-day package, you will purchase, use for 30 days, the time will run out, versus a subscription package, you use it for 30 days. And at the end of the 30 days, it will auto renew and those perks and benefits will be given to you again. So I wanted to clear up the confusion between what is set up as a one-time package 30 days versus a subscription for 30 days. Now let's talk a little bit about why I think subscriptions are super important. The first one is there is a deeper customer relationship and engagement. And when you talk about these particular points, you understand that one of the key drawbacks is that customer relationship often ends at the end of a purchase. So someone comes in, buys a one-time package, they got what they needed, and they're gone. That makes it very difficult for you to build stable revenue. And so this lack of interaction that you have after the transaction takes place leads to customer churn, and buyers move on to new experiences and new platforms, whether you're a game server owner or a mod or a script developer who makes one-time packages. So by contrast, subscription models provide an ongoing touch point between you, the developer, or the game server owner, and the buyer. You create opportunities for regular communication because now you're, they're part of your ecosystem. They didn't just buy that, that one coffee cup and then they're gone. They're going to come back because you've now created a, a, a thread between you and the buyer. This fosters a loyal user base as subscriptions often tie customers into long-term relationships with the platform. In the same vein, the subscription model lends itself to upselling opportunity. And so, hey, you bought this subscription. Did you know this can be more beneficial to you as part of a bigger package? So I have a creator that has a small tier subscription that gives you access to X number of scripts. That is part of a larger subscription upsell opportunity where you can then upgrade that subscription to a much larger subscription that gives you access to even more packages. So it's a great opportunity for you to build that relationship with that creator if all they want is a set of five. And if they really like those five and they want more of your products, then they will upgrade their subscription to a higher tier. And so it, that ongoing touch point just means that you have a much easier way to convert that $10 subscription to a $15 subscription or et cetera. That constant feedback created between you, the developer or the game server owner and the creator is really, really important. And that's very different than just people who buy one-time packages. So another great benefit is the better alignment with consumer expectations because um, buyers no longer want to just buy one-time and done packages. They expect continuous improvements. They expect content updates and seamless integrations. So you want to make sure that your whatever you're delivering in a subscription model has a commitment from your side in terms of updates and making sure that it's compatible uh, going forward. A subscription model meets these expectations by offering users more value over time. So when you're buying a subscription, you know it's not just one and done. Like think about a Netflix subscription. When you buy a Netflix subscription, it's not just you're done and then if it breaks, it's like, oh, well, too bad. No, you know that if, if there's an issue, they're going to fix it. They want to make sure that it works. They want to make sure that it works with the newest TV if there's a Netflix integration and the app breaks or something. You know, think of like a Samsung TV. They have a software update and all of a sudden the Netflix app that's in the TV doesn't work. 
do you think Netflix is going to be like, oh, well, I don't know. That's it. You're done. No, they know that there's a subscription revenue backing that development that goes into that app. So they're going to push whatever, whatever updates and fixes so that you can continue using Netflix. That's kind of the expectation that comes from a buyer to a developer or a seller. So I think the biggest perk that you can include in a subscription package is to include that you'll have that you'll provide updates and perhaps some sort of additional support for when those issues come across. Because as a developer, you're not going to know how X or Y script, for in the example of a script, how it's going to react with a specific platform that they're using. So giving them the opportunity or, or the pipeline, the channel to come and share those issues is very, very important. So it's not just a extra um, commitment from the buyer's point of view, it's also from the seller's point of view. Absolutely. You have to continue supporting the, the software as long as you're continuing to have it as a sub subscription model. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So in the gaming audience, if we, if we tailor it more to us in the gaming space, especially those in modern communities, you know, they appreciate the flexibility and perceived value of subscription-based access. Um, as gaming, for example, becomes more service-oriented, like Xbox Game Pass or PlayStation Plus, for example, players are becoming accustomed to paying for access rather than ownership. Access just means that the liability falls back on the developer to make sure that it works, right? Uh, imagine playing Xbox Game Pass and playing a game that's an old game uh, that you, you're excited to play, like say Halo. You know, Halo was made a long time ago. And imagine if they say, oh yeah, we have it on Game Pass, but it doesn't work on your latest Xbox. No, guess what? You're going to say, that's not my problem. You say it's on Game Pass, it needs to work. So all of the work that was put into the example of the Halo game, the, the very first one, there was additional work that was put into it so that it could work with all the different um, languages and you know framework that supports the, the newest gen consoles now. Um, so subscription made my platforms align with this trend, ensuring the developers meet the needs of their audience while simultaneously increasing the platform's lifetime value. Um, any questions, Ted? This don't seems clear to me. Okay. Another great perk of subscription packages is fostering future development. So this isn't just about you having more money down the long pipe. It You have to also commit. But in a way, you're also getting support long term. So fostering future development is really, really important. Uh, because I believe that one-time purchases can stifle innovation. Uh, once the developer has captured the revenue from an initial sale, there's little financial incentive to invest heavily in post-launch content. So how, how do we build on a specific product once it launches? How do we think of new ideas? You're not going to think on new ideas because you already got the initial, you know, opening sale launch money. There's no incentive for you to continue building on it because all these people already own one-time packages. They're not going to give you more money just because you add more features to it. It's already going to be included on this. So much like a DLC on a video game, you know, the core foundation is there, but you also want to create new opportunities, you know, like Train Simulator. Train Simulator is a great example of this. It, do you have trains in Train Simulator? Do they work? Yes. Okay, great. Do you want to add this cool train? Yeah, okay, well, you got to pay for that. That's really a great way that, uh, that they support continued progress and continued development on this. So a subscription model, on the other hand, provides a safety net for you, the seller, the developer, the game server owner, to continually invest in future updates. One really good example is if you have a Minecraft server and there's a new Minecraft version and it breaks your server, what are you going to do? You're going to stop because your customers have already paid? No, you know that you need to continue putting effort into it. Otherwise, your revenue stops. People can't play in your server. People aren't paying for anything. So that mindset needs is it's is definitely enforced in a subscription model. So you need to keep adding value. Absolutely. With predictable recurring revenue, developers have the freedom to take more risks, explore new ideas, and push boundaries, knowing that they can count on that steady financial foundation. Um, to give you more perspective on this, I think some of the most successful subscription models that I've seen in, in our portfolio, as well as industry, they usually sit between 60 to 80% subscription revenue. 
And that lets them know that they can count on that money month over month as long as they continue supporting everyone that's paying that makes up that 60 to 80 percent of your revenue you keep supporting them with updates innovation dlcs whatever expansions you want to include on this it gives you the financial breathing room to say hey i've got four thousand dollars coming in next next month in subscriptions i know i can count on that money what am i going to return to these people that are supporting me to continue making sure that their scripts whatever works so harvard business review has a really nice quote uh, and it says, cultivate innovation because they can dedicate resources towards ongoing improvement and customer satisfaction rather than focusing solely on customer acquisition. And that's, I think, one of the biggest turning points in a, in a good seller versus a great seller is taking the customer acquisition approach and thinking further ahead. Step one, make sale. Okay, good. We need to think about step two, three, and four updates to what they've sold how are you going to upsell this particular person on what they've on what they've purchased as well so if they bought x product what can we relate to that they would also like that is an upselling opportunity is this package part of a is this uh sale part of a core package and then we have other things that you can stack on it that's another type of upsell so thinking further than just get money check out we want to continue on building a a series of different opportunities within that purchase. And that's something that I think requires planning and is part of your product development, it's part of your go-to market. So that's the that's fostering future development. Questions, Ted? No, oh, very clear. Okay. Another really nice perk of subscription packages is improved customer retention. One of the biggest advantages of subscription models is retention. And with one-time purchases, developers face a constant challenge of having to acquire new customers. And this is a problem that I come across to a lot with some of my portfolio. They sell 50,000 scripts, but then what? What's next? You know, they get the money, they sold the script. What else can you do with those customers at that point? They've got what they needed, they're gone. They've checked out, they've left your store. Um, and so it's really, really important that we think about what's going to happen next. And developers face the constant challenge of acquiring new customers to replace those who have moved on. Um, You may have a product catalog of 10 really good items, but selling only one means there's nine available. And if you sell it as a one-time package, it makes it very difficult for you to build some sort of connection with that buyer and tell them about the other nine. So it makes it really difficult to improve that retention. Um, in contrast, the subscription model places emphasis on retention through regular updates. And again, we talked about that already. Uh, personalized offers, we talked about that earlier as well, and community engagement. So really, really important to do that. Um, this retention increase not only leads to a, what we call a higher lifetime value, meaning how much money you get from one person ever for each customer, but also reduces the cost of customer acquisition. And that is the most expensive thing that any seller has to deal with how to bring them to the store. How to keep them in the store is part of product marketing, communications, et cetera. But getting them to the store is the hardest turning wheel of this entire process. So you want to make sure that you have some thread between you and that buyer if they check out. And subscription products makes it very easy to do that. Uh, Those customers are less likely to churn also so if they know they're getting regular benefits, so you don't have to worry about refunds and chargebacks if you're staying on top of the product. And if the product is set as a subscription, you're naturally going to want to make sure that it's up to date and it works with the latest frameworks or whatever it is that you're selling. I think the biggest benefit that comes from subscriptions is burnout reduction. So you make something, 5,000 people buy, it's exciting, right? Now you have the pressure of having to repeat that. Otherwise, you can continue making having a business like this. And that leads to burnout because once you do two in a row that are great, you got to do a third one. And Ted, that can lead to a really, really big issue, which is burnout. We all experience it in some way or fashion, whether you're a seller or not. And so you're trapped in this loop of creating, releasing, creating, releasing, and marketing new content just to keep your business afloat with all, and this is all with one-time purchases. So the pressure to constantly innovate increases the risk of diminishing returns. 
as players may eventually become desensitized to new releases, especially if the quality starts to slip. Hey, life happens. We go up, we go down. And sometimes that's reflected on our work. And it's really important to not let customers see that as much as possible because then they will think that you are a lesser developer, a lesser game server because of that. And so that pressure of the constant create, innovate, release, create, innovate, release uh, can lead to that burnout. So by contrast, subscription models reduce the need for developers to chase sale after sale, release after release, and establish a predictable revenue stream. You can focus on creating more meaningful and polished updates without the fear of financial shortfalls. Um, this leads to healthier work-life balance for development teams, encourages more thoughtful innovation, because now you're like, hey, I've got this money from people who are supporting me month over month. How can we make this better for them? You're more likely to want to stay involved with a specific product if it's doing well. Um, and ultimately, you know, it ends as a better product for whoever buys it at the end. A big thing that I'm thinking about this as well is I think if you're seeing everything as an individual release, you, you kind of want or need everything to be better than the last release as well, because otherwise, otherwise people will kind of talk down on it or, or see it as, as less of a big achievement. And if you have, for example, things as a subscription in a bundle, even if it's not your biggest release, if you're still adding value to that bundle or to that subscription, I think it's, it's again, less stressful and easier to, to still make progression and offer new things and stuff like that instead of having to chase that newest, highest release constantly. Yeah. So part of innovating, part of building value on a subscription product is make one is making sure that it's updated, but also adding other products that are part of that suite, right? Think of, uh, think of Microsoft, for example. They have their, their Microsoft Office suite. They are constantly adding new products to this. And I think one of the latest ones that I can think of is uh, Microsoft Clarity, which is their analytics platform. And they're con it, it's still all part of the same suite. Yes, the price may increase slowly over time, but what they've done is they're, they're, they're saying, hey, you're committing to paying a subscription price for this. We're going to make sure there's value behind it every day. Or even um, Call of Duty with the with the Microsoft Pass or the Game Pass now, that's a big one. It's like right. so many people already had it or knew about it, but kind of didn't know if they should get it. And now I know so many people who got it just because it contains Call of Duty added value. Yeah, exactly. So subscription models, again, provide a more sustainable path going forward, allowing you to focus on delivering higher quality experiences whether it's product updates or additional new products. Um, and you also build a more loyal customer base because they are, they're now part of it. They're, they're, they're technically vested in your success because they're willing to give you X amount per month. They're partners and you need to be, you, you, you need to deliver to these partners, whether it's in the form of making sure that things continue to work. Um, there may be an infrastructure behind a specific product that needs to go out. And so that's also going to be something that we need to um, keep in mind. So that's why I believe subscriptions are really, really important. It is a big turning wheel for creators to go from one-time packages only to one-time packages and subscriptions. But I think the eventual evolution is that there's going, there should be less one-time packages and more subscriptions to give you that breathing room, reduce burnout, and build that customer base and strengthen that customer base and more clarity of what's what you have coming in as well so you can know what you can can use exactly amazing cool